Rhinos! Our enemies hide in metal boxes, the cowards! The fools! They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. Do you like to move your miniature soldiers from one location to another? Do you have the same armor value as a wet paper bag? And do you have an appreciation for classic cars? Well, if you haven't read the title of the video yet, I want to introduce you to the cheapest, most cost efficient, the traditional transport for your Space Marine Legion. And I'm going to prove it. My name is Mechanid. Let's get started. Where to even begin? Ever present, ever humble, the Rhino has been a part of Warhammer from near enough the beginning. One of the first vehicles to ever get added to the game. The Rhino chassis has served in one variation or another since the very first rogue trader days of Warhammer. In the lore, the Rhino is the rugged chassis on which much of the Space Marine and wider Imperial motor pool is built. A simple armoured personnel carrier, the Rhino began life in the pre-Crusade era as a tracked multi-use utility vehicle for the colonists of pre-fall humanity. The STC that produced the Rhino was only just saved by the Mechanicum, and due to the vehicle's uncomplicated construction and ease of repair, the Rhino was able to spread throughout the burgeoning Imperium to their point of dominance today. Originally named the RH-1NO Tracked Exploration and Multi-Purpose Defense Vehicle, the Rhino soon became the mainstay template of the Astartes Legion, being adapted into tanks, artillery carriers, anti-aircraft platforms, and more. While never the biggest or baddest or most impactful, the Rhino has always been there, chugging along, getting the good guys, or the bad guys, where they need to be. So come rain or shine, you can depend on a Rhino. Now onto the stats and special rules. Being a vehicle means you can't just go wherever you want all the time. You'll have to pivot, so be sure to plan around that, especially when you're deploying your tank. Also, consider your armor facings. Make sure you have your strongest armor towards the most dangerous enemy to ensure the best chance of survival. The stats. Movement 14 and ballistic skill 4. Pretty standard for a space marine vehicle, but front and side armor 11 and rear armor of 10, ooh, and only 3 hull points, uh, but 12 transport capacity, not bad. Come stock with a twin-linked bolter and a pintle mount and smoke launchers. Now the special rules. Dedicated transport. This allows you to take a model with this rule as an upgrade for another squad, meaning it will not take up any space in the force organization chart. Some of the base units that can take a Rhino include Legion Command Squad, Legion Veteran Squad, Legion Destroyers, Legion Tacticals, Despoilers, Tactical Support Squads and Recon Squads, also Seekers and Heavy Support Squads. Also, many Legion specific units can take a Rhino, so be sure to check with your Legion if your specialists in question can get a metal box. Infantry Transport. This limits what sort of units can go in a Rhino, namely nothing with the bulky special rule. More on this later. Repair. A really cool little rule. Instead of shooting, you can roll a d6, and on a 4+, you remove the immobilized result. While it doesn't give you back a hull point, and because it takes place after the movement phase means you can't repair and then scoot away, it does give you a chance to get your ride unstuck. However, I rarely see this come up as Rhinos tend to just get killed outright and not stuck. Still, it's an upside that's unique to a Rhino. And now, the pros and cons. Fast. A 14-inch move is nothing to scoff at. And while you can only move half and get your guys out, adding this movement over a turn or two can give a serious boost to any squad. Transport capacity 12. Carrying 12 lads is an important fact, as it means you can attach up to two additional characters to a normal 10-man squad. This means that apothecaries, consoles, tech marines, or praetors are not left behind and you can be more flexible with which units can come along for a ride. Can gain other deployment options. If every model in a unit that is inside a Rhino for deployment has infiltrate, scout, or outflank, then the Rhino gets it too. This means that cheeky units like recon squads or terror squads, for example, can sneak a whole APC into play, which is never not funny. Cheap. This is perhaps the best thing about a Rhino. They are dirt cheap both in points and in money, and you're not going to lose sleep over a Rhino getting ripped in half by a last cannon. Though, the guys inside it may complain about a draft. Accessible. Loads of units can take a Rhino as a transport, meaning that they are very easy to slip into a list. And this means that you as a player are likely to get a lot of use out of a Rhino as opposed to something like a drop pod or a termite. The cons. Not an assault vehicle. 
This is perhaps the biggest thing holding the Rhino back, aside from its armor value. The fact that you cannot charge out of this vehicle means that you'll have to wait a turn, and this means that any assault unit, like the spoilers or veterans with power weapons, will suffer if they are in this transport. I would recommend putting shooting units in a Rhino and avoid any assault units altogether. Combat slash cruising speed. As a vehicle, if a Rhino moves more than half its movement, it can only fire one gun at its maximum ballistic skill, and it can only fire snapshots with the others. Not a big drawback, as Rhinos will only have one or two guns at most, but it's an important thing to note. Slow when disembarking. If you move over half of your movement, you cannot disembark your troops. As such, Rhinos feel slow unless you're going for a turn two disembark. So turn one, move up 14 inches, turn two, move 6.9 inches, then disembark the goon squad. Tank movement. The fact that a rhino has to move like a tank, go figure, can be rather disorientating for new players, especially if you've come from 40k, like I did, and you're used to having tanks move like hovercraft. This can be a bit of a sore spot, and can make tanks feel unwieldy and cumbersome, so just bear that in mind as it may spoil your enjoyment with them on the tabletop. However, I would encourage you to lean into that system and learn about pivoting and angling your armor to keep your best front forward towards the enemy. Fragile. Rhinos might as well be made out of paper. Even strength 4 bolt guns are able to deal glancing hits to the rear armor. Do not expect a rhino to last long. You will need to hug cover and stay away from weapons like auto cannons and especially last cannons. Damaged effects. Transports will pass on damaged conditions to their passengers, so things like crew shaken, or crew stunned, or weapon destroyed or immobilized will force the unit inside to make a leadership test. If they fail, they will be firing snapshots if they disembark this turn. If the Rhino gets wrecked, the guides inside can disembark as normal, but they will have to take a pinning test as well as the leadership test. Also, if the Rhino does bite it and explodes, the unit inside will take a number of Strength 8 AP dash hits equal to the number of models in the squad, and then take a pinning test. While not the end of the world for Space Marines with their high leadership and good armor saves, watch out for this, as it can seriously cripple a unit and punish players that overextend too quickly with a Rhino. Finally, Infantry Transport. This rule does restrict what you can put in the Rhino, so nothing with the bulky X rule can go in. So, no Assault Marines, no Terminators, no Robots, no Primarchs, they are simply too wide to ride. War gear! First, the weapon, the Hunter Killer Missile. You can take a Hunter Killer Missile as a front hull mount. These are fine if you want a little extra firepower. For 5 points, you get a single 48 inch Strength 8 AP3 shot. Normally, I'd say go for it, as killing a marine for 5 points or getting a penetrating hit on another tank is cool, but since it's only one shot, this weapon is perhaps the most swingy weapon in the game. Either it's an instant kill on a marine or a penetrating hit on a tank, or it can miss and be a total waste of 5 points. I'd pass and go for the safe plays. On the other hand, you can take one of the following weapons. These are all pintle mounts, so it can fire 360 degrees, unlike the Hunter Killer, which can only fire in a forward arc. Combi Bolter. Plus 5 points. Not bad if you've got the points, but I would always look to characters and infantry squads before upgrading rhinos. Twin linked means you'll hit most of your shots, so it's got that going for it, I guess. You get one of these stock as base with your rhino, so it's good if you want to double up. Combi Weapons. Plus 10 points. Because all combi weapons, both minor and magna, cost the same, you can get a combi melter for the same price you would take a combi flamer, so there's no reason to not go for the most powerful shot. You do only get one shot with your combi weapon, but I'm not going to turn my nose up at a melter gun round. However, just bear in mind that artificer armor is 10 points, so way up if a single combi weapon shot is worth the same as artificer armor on a sergeant. Also, the same logic applies as with hunter killer weapons, and 10 points for a single shot is that really worth it if you can just miss it altogether. God, I wish you could take a combi disintegrator on a rhino, that'd be so cool. Havoc Launcher, plus 15 points, the classic, and weirdly expensive. While I love the look of this thing, you're unlikely to get many hits, as despite its extra accuracy due to twin linked, it's only got a small blast, and as such, it's only likely to tag a maximum of three marines in a tight group. While it has decent strength, the poor armor penetration will make it hard to push through armor, especially against things like space marines. Take it if you're up against humans like solo orcs or militia, otherwise I'd leave it off. The Heavy Bolter. At plus 15 points is another expensive choice. Throwing out 4 strength 5 shots is always good and is a good 36 inch range. However, for the price of artificer armor and then some, I'd say this is overcosted. I would pass. The Heavy Flamer. Plus 5 points. 
Cheap and cheerful and close range, effectively a template heavy bolter. You will likely get as many hits as shots on the HGB. However, due to the range, you will need to get very close, and that means danger for a Rhino. I would also pass on this one, unless you got a plan or gain bonuses to flamers like a Salamander. The Multi-Melter at plus 30 points. For nearly the cost of a Rhino, you can slap a Multi-Melter on the roof. Easily the most killy you can make a Rhino, but for this price, I would also pass. With only five more points, you can get a whole other Rhino, which for me would give you the flexibility in transport and maneuvering. However, if you are scouting or infiltrating a Rhino, bringing along a Multi-Melter on the roof can make for a really nasty sting in the tail. This upgrade is more dependent on the rest of your army, what's transported inside the Rhino, and your game plan than the Rhino itself, so plan accordingly. Equipment. Smoke Launchers. Your best friend in staying alive. At the end of your movement phase, you can pop smoke to cover your tank. You'll count as 25% obscured until your next turn and get a whopping 6-up cover sage. You'll forego shooting, and it gives you a chance to dodge an otherwise lethal shot. Smoke launchers don't count as weapons, and can only be used once per game and not as part of the reaction. Even with smoke launchers, I'd still advise to hug cover and avoid taking direct fire whenever possible. But, while they are limited, smoke launchers can go a long way to help to give you a chance at not being killed, and I find it's always worth to use them as you never know when you might get lucky. Armor. You can't get any extra armor upgrades. Please, Games Workshop, give us extra armor upgrades like armored skirts, reinforced tracks, and more. I'd really like that. Just release a PDF. It's not that hard. Come on, Jesus Christ. Upgrades. Searchlights. Pretty solid at only five points to get some searchlights. Since rhinos are so cheap, you can easily tag a target that you want to light up with the rhino's pinball weapons and not worry about return fire. Either your opponent waits a shooting reaction on killing the rhino or lets it go through. Either way, your target gets lit up. I'd always take searchlights if you've got five points to spend. Dozer Blades. Getting to re-roll those dangerous terrain tests is always good, as when you get unlucky, you'll really feel that, and losing a hull point is a third of your health. However, if it's a toss-up between this and searchlights, I would take the searchlights, as it's more in line with the support role of a rhino. As an aside, when measuring from vehicles with dozer blades, measure from the hull and ignore the blade. Now, onto tactics, loadouts, and uses. First, the loadouts. Personally, I would always go for a completely stock rhino. This is because of how fragile the Rhino is, especially in this edition, meaning you're not going to lose many points when it inevitably gets busted. However, if you're taking a sneaky Rhino, one carrying a squad which grants it infiltrate, scout, or outflank, a multi-melter is not a bad shout if you can afford it. This is because it lets you get into position quick, which is also really good at popping other light to medium vehicles. Also, I would always recommend searchlights on a Rhino, as it can help you in those night fighting matchups where you might otherwise suffer. Tactics. Body blocking. I would argue that blocking line of sight and enemy movement is the second most impactful thing that a rhino can do after pure transportation. Hopping your troops out the back door and using a rhino as cover and a roadblock to prevent enemy close combat troops from coming in is a major upside, since enemy models can't move within one inch of another unit outside of a charge. In this way, you can gum up the board with transports and turn it into bumper to bumper traffic jams. Your opponent will need to explode the Rhino, as since if they wreck it, the model will remain as terrain. This will mean wasting precious anti-tank on a lowly Rhino. So channel your inner fish of fury and gum up the board with cheap transports. This tactic works especially well if you have multiple Rhinos as well, as it's hard to block an entire board off if you only have one transport. whack a -mole. Rules as written, if a unit ends its movement within two inches of an access point of a valid transport, they can embark upon it. What this means is, if you perform a movement reaction and get close enough to a transport, in this case the Rhino, you can hop back inside. So in practice, say some angry world eaters are closing in, they move within 12 inches of your squad, you shuffle them back with a reaction and get back inside your Rhino, getting away from the charge altogether. While this is a very niche use, you can use this to save yourself from incoming fire and make charges far harder. I really like this strategy. Ramming. The last use for a Rhino is getting in a cheeky ram attack. To make a ram, pivot the vehicle to face the model that you are going to ram, then move it as far as you can until it touches base to base with the rammed model. If you ram a non-vehicle unit, it suffers D6 AP dash hits with a strength equal to half of the front arm, so for a Rhino it's 6. So, for a Rhino, you're looking at D6 AP dash strength 6 hits, which isn't bad. Since these are auto hits and you will wound most infantry on twos, this gives you a pretty good chance at forcing some armor save, but with no AP and 3 up armor saves being the standard, you're unlikely to get many through. However, damage is damage. 
Also, if you're a super heavy, you get 2d6 strength 10 hits, so get ramming with your fell blades and the like. Also, if you're ramming a building or vehicle, if you, the rammer, have more hull points than the thing that you are ramming, you get a further plus one strength on top of this. If you do want to get your troops out of a transport, you have to do this before the transport moves. So take that in consideration, so your boys aren't left trapped inside. Also, you can only fire snapshots after doing a ram. In all, rams can be a cool and thematic and interesting curveball to catch other players off guard. This can be good as a distraction play to buy your lads some more time. But don't think a ram attack is anything more than a Hail Mary such attacks often are. I would also weigh the advantages that a ram can give you as opposed to just using the rhino as a body block. Characters. A tech marine can always slap a hull point back on a rhino, but this will often be a waste of time, as you'll want those cog boys giving buffs to ballistic skill with their cognis signum, or repairing other, larger tanks. I'd leave most characters and support for other more important vehicles and units. That being said, a rhino's transport capacity is 12, so a 10-man squad can bring along two extra friends, so if you're going to bring characters along, they will always be space for them. Legion Considerations Certain legions will help rhinos out more than others. Iron Hands, granting them a 6 plus it will not die for a chance to self-heal, which does in fact stack with their repair rule. White Scars, plus 1 to movement, will get your guys into place even faster. Space Wolves, plus 1 strength on ramming attacks if you really want to squeeze out max damage out of your rhino running people over. Alpha Legion, while counting as plus 2 inches further away will give your rhino a bit of extra protection if you can outrange your opponents, the big bonus Alpha Legion is, is taking other people's units with rewards of treachery, and if those units can take a rhino, then giving them the extra mobility therein. Also, it means you'll be more likely to be out of range of armor bane effects. Imperial Fists, plus 1 to hit with bolt weapons to give a little extra boost to your combi bolters. However, in regards to legions, since rhinos are transports first and foremost, I believe that legions with any strong shooting unit that has relentless or doesn't require heavy weapons will benefit more from the increased mobility and the protection a rhino has to offer, more so than a rhino will benefit from any specific legion traits. As such, my picks to go in a rhino include Dark Angels Dreadwing Interemptors and their Plasma Flamers, Emperor's Children Cacophony and their Cacophony, Night Lord's Terror Squads, especially with Rotor Cannons. All of the above units will not suffer a penalty to moving and disembarking, meaning you can drive up, hop out, and start blasting. Comparisons Legion Land Raiders and Spartans there will be more on these big boys in their own video later, but aside from them being huge transports, Land Raiders and Spartans also double up as tanks in their own right, with a number of last cannons each, which lets them stand and bang with other tanks. Land Raiders and Spartans can also transport Terminators, which makes them much more flexible. Also, 14 all-round armor is still really good, despite what naysayers would normally say. However, Land Raiders and Spartans are more expensive and points intensive themselves. That being said, Land Raiders and Rhinos don't really occupy much of the same niche, despite both being dedicated transports. As such, Rhinos don't really have much in the way of comparison in their own weight class. If Razorbacks existed in Heresy, then we'd have a lot more to talk about. For me, the discussion is more about what is inside the transport and where you want it to go on the battlefield, rather than how well the transport does. The transport should support the unit, not the other way around. So if you need protection and fire support, take a Land Raider or a Spartan. If you need a rapid insert or a deep strike, take a drop pod. If you need speed and point efficiency, then I'd say take a Rhino. Counterplay. Rhinos will fold like paper to any significant firepower, so unless they hug cover, they'll get smoked even by errant bolter fire to the rear. One upside is to this, that something like a 10-man last cannon squad will not want to waste their shots obliterating a single rhino. I'd look to things like spare auto cannons and mid-strength shooting like even multi-lasers or even heavy bolters in your army to glance a rhino to death. Basically, you don't want to overkill the rhino, as you don't want to waste shots killing a small transport and leave the juicy components unmolested. Also, rhinos can really benefit from threat saturation, so having lots of them as opposed to having one or two will make them less of a desirable target. Where to buy, convert, and use as other units. As always, third-party sellers are your friend. Rhinos have been around in the game longer than I've been alive, so you can always find some on eBay or second-hand sellers. While the Demos Pattern Rhino is the, quote, 30k Rhino, I would be very surprised if someone has your eye out over using a 40k Rhino. Both vehicles occupy the same footprint and silhouette, so there shouldn't really be an issue. My advice is that if you can get a Demos Rhino, get one of those. I think they look cooler, and they have more space built in for specific Legion customizations. But if you can find a cheap 40k Rhino, then grab that one over a more expensive Demos. You could always use the Rhino as a Damocles Command Rhino, a really underloved unit in its own right, and one that I hope to talk about more in a later video. In short, it's the personal whip, 
of a Master of Signals and comes with loads of extra upgrades to help deter Deep Strikers. It's a really cool unit. In summary, if you are a refined and cultured gentleman like me, the stupid tw then you will use Rhino Transports. They are fast, maneuverable, cost-effective, and best of all, expendable. Convinced? Good. If not, go back to the start and try again, reprobate. Still here? Good. That means you're smart enough to hear me say, thanks for watching. This was a really interesting one to do. I feel like Rhinos are a little bit overlooked in most 30k discussions in favour of the more flashy tanks like Land Raiders and Spartans. As always, thanks for the support. It feels great to be back and feel the channel growing. So remember to comment, subscribe, and like the video. <coughs> My name is Mechanid. Thanks for watching. Originally named the R1, oh God's sake. Originally named the RH1NO Tracked Exploration and Multipurpose Defense Vehicle. Uh, originally named the RH1NO Tracked and Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's not going in the final recording.